to survival preparedness for beginners and thank you for joining me today for this exciting video that I have coming out now this video here is basically hopefully to wake everybody up and to get you ready for whatever may be coming down the pike and there's a lot of stuff that could be coming down the pike if we had a crystal ball well we could tell the future and if you are new to my channel thank you for being here I do appreciate it Everybody that comes into this channel is very welcome to be here. You're welcome to comment on any of my videos, and I thank you once again for being here. So do me a favor. If you like what you see, and you like my channel, and my playlist, and everything else that I have designed for just your viewing pleasure, then hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell so you get notified when my videos come out. Give me a thumbs up, and share this with any of your friends and family that you feel may need some of this information to be ready on a moment's notice. So in just a second, we're going to get going on today's video. Don't go anywhere because you need to hear some of this information. It could be the difference between being ready and being left behind. video is on restructuring and possibly reorganizing your long-term food pantry or your storage system. And why is now a good time to do that? Well, with the whole given thing of food prices starting to rise and just about everything is going up as far as any type of emergency supplies, backups, battery backups, um, any type of gear any of that kind of stuff, all the prices are starting to rise, okay? Now, we are in April, and you got hurricane season that's going to be rolling in just around the corner. Now, given what has taken place over the last few weeks with the severe tornadoes and everything that have taken place throughout most of the country in the uh, midsection of the states here, well, it just goes to show you, I think Mother Nature is not going to be too happy this year. Now, call it climate change or whatever you want to call it. I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but whatever it may be that is taking place and changing what is going on, the grand solar minimum, climate change, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff, El Nino, La Nina, you know, the whole nine yards, folks, it all plays together. It's like all the pieces of the puzzle are coming together, and it's our job to be prepared. So that is why right now it is a good time for you to take this advantage before it's too late and making sure that you have whatever it is that you may need and you can still afford to buy. So to now is a really good time for your restructuring, your reorganization of your food pantry or your storage stock system. Now let's get going on this. Number one. All right, take stock, all right? I can't tell you enough how important this is, all right? Taking stock of what you exactly do have, you may have already gone through some type of an emergency type situation. I mean, we had the huge ice storm not too long ago. We have all these devastating tornadoes that are taking place now. You're gonna start using up some of your supplies. You're gonna start using up some of your gear. You're gonna be running low on batteries. You're gonna be running low on food, different types of food and everything else. So you need to take stock and see what you have so that you can plan ahead so that you and your family are ready for whatever the next emergency coming down the pike may be. Yes, there are government agencies out there that are designed to come in and help us after some type of natural disaster, like FEMA. But we've all seen exactly how that all plays out and when it rolls out. It doesn't always happen at a blink of an eye, folks. So you need to be prepared yourself so that you are ready. All right? Number two, organize. Organization is key to any type of survival period. You can talk to anybody. Talk to somebody that was in the military. Talk to some, somebody that's in the um, emergency response. 
whatever it may be, organization is key to survival. Being organized and having all your stuff organized so that you know where it is and everything else is really, really key on your survival. So now is a good time to take your stock and then to organize your stock. Now when you're organizing, say like your food products, especially if you have canned goods and all this kind of stuff, always make sure that the old is in the front and the new is in the back. This way here, there is no chance of, you know, you're grabbing something that's way past its date, which it may still be good, don't throw it out, but you gotta go through all the tests, which I've covered a video on and this way here, you know if it's good or not. So being organized is another key factor that you need to take a look at right now. All right, it all depends on your space and everything else. Number three, write it all down. Get yourself a planner. I'm big on planners. If you watch any of my videos, I talk about them all the time. A planner, a journal, whatever it is you wanna use. Write down exactly what you do have. Take stock of everything. What are the things that you need? What are you things that you need to add? What have you used? What do you use the most of? And what do you need to do? Now, we're all getting our nice little stimulus checks. Now, if you haven't spent all the money on something else, make sure that you're taking care of the home front first because that is the most important thing. Like I did mention a few minutes ago, we all know that FEMA can roll in and help us out a little bit, but they may not be rolling in anytime soon. So you have to make sure that you have a nice stockpile to get you through until maybe help does arrive. So writing everything down and getting everything in order is going to be key to your survival. It's very simple. It sounds like it could be a lot of work. And at the very beginning, it may be a lot of work depending on how much stockpile you do have of all your emergency gear, first aid, your food, water, such a, you know? So you wanna make sure that you do have this stuff all written down. It makes your life easier in the long run. Number four, plan out meals. You know what your family likes to eat, all right? So hopefully you're stockpiling foods that your family will eat, all right? Now, plan out some quick meals. Write them down in your journal, your notebook or whatever else so you can remember because when a natural disaster or something happens, your whole mindset and everything is gonna get all thrown out of whack. So if you write it down beforehand and just make some basic recipes, just write them down. You know, I can use, I can use some macaroni or rice or canned potatoes and I have this type of meat and this, and I have canned chicken, tuna fish, spam, uh, canned meat, whatever it may be but you can go ahead and pre-do some quick meals so you don't have to think about it when the disaster hits and you have your mind set on other things. This way here, hopefully, you're trying to come up with meals that are high in nutrition, high in calories, because more than likely you're gonna be doing some type of work to survive, depending on what type of a situation you just went through. How do you're gonna be entered into win the free giveaway that's going out this coming Saturday will be announced at 7 p.m. live here on Survival Preparedness for Beginners. All you need to do is comment on this particular video and make sure that you watch the video and I wanna know exactly what it is you're looking to do. If you're gonna be doing some restructuring, reorganization, if uh, you're taking stock of what you have to be prepared for whatever may be coming our way because we don't have a crystal ball now do we so if you do that put it in the comments below and you will be entered to win on this coming Saturday 7 p.m. live Eastern Standard Time here on survival preparedness for beginners thank you for watching good luck to everyone number five figure out approximately now, not down to the T, okay, but approximately how many meals you have. You know, you can take a pretty good eye and say, okay, I've got X amount of, of boxes of, say, macaroni. I have 25 pounds of rice. I have 20 cans of potatoes. I have macaroni coming out the touch hole, if you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you know. But you can take and you can kind of figure out with what you do have, how many meals you may get. So if you know 
you want to make sure that you have a two week supply, I would make sure that you have two good solid meals a day per person. So if you're a family of four, well, do the math folks, right? You want to make sure that you are supplying the need that you're going to have in a disastrous type situation. You want to make sure that you're supplying at least those two meals per day. This way here, everybody stays pretty much healthy. They're going to stay upbeat because if you're hungry and everything else, you're going to make bad decisions. It's a proven fact. I mean, you can go online and look at any type of doctor, um, YouTube channel, whatever else. When people get hungry, they don't make good quality decisions. They make hasty decisions, which usually will get you in trouble. So you want to make sure that you're coming up with some type of plan to make sure that that doesn't happen. Number six, know where everything is. Now you say, well, if I organize it and everything else, you know, well, this is true. But take and write down in your, your planner or your notebook and label your shelves. You could have a dry goods shelf. You could have a canned goods shelf. You could have whatever, a pasta shelf, rice shelf, whatever it may be. And if you write things down exactly where they are, different spices, different types of canned goods, you know, it's easier for you to go, you know, hey, Johnny, do me a favor. Go in and on the third shelf, grab me three cans of green beans. So if you label the shelves and they, you can send your kid in there and they can walk up there and go, okay, there's the third shelf, there's green beans, boom, grab three cans. Knowing where everything is, is another part of the whole key to survival. Now, something else that goes along with that is, is knowing where your first aid is and knowing what's in your first aid. So if you have several different first aid kits, you may wanna do like I do. I have one main first aid kit in the house. Now I have all the boo-boo kits. You know, we have a couple of those in the house too. But the main first aid kit Everybody knows where it is. It's a bright red bag with, you know, the emblem on it and everything else. I've done videos on first aid kits and showing you exactly what I do put in mine. You could put something different in yours because some of your family's needs might be a little bit different than mine. But it gives you a template to go by. A lot of my videos, that's what that's all about. I give you a template to go by. Doesn't mean you have to do exactly what I'm saying but it's just a template so that you have an idea of where you're going and what you want to accomplish. You can take away and add to anything that I cover on any of my videos on my channel. But at least if it gets you thinking and gives you an idea so you have some way that know that I'm gonna go down this path, I'm gonna use some of this, but I'm gonna substitute this. That's totally fine. The key is being prepared. It's the whole reason I started Survival Preparedness for Beginners. All right, number seven. In case of an evacuation, you have to have some supplies that are ready to go. So if you do have, say, a 72-hour bucket that I've done videos on, how to build your own, you know, you want to make sure that you have more than one bucket, correct? Because that's basically, you know, you're going to get maybe meals for three to four people in that 72 hour bucket. So if you have a family of four, you're probably gonna need a couple of these buckets, but at least they're easy to grab and go. Now, this is a situation where I would suggest for that particular situation on an evacuation type deal, they can get heavy. So that's probably where you wanna go with some of your freeze dried foods. Four Patriots is a good one. I like Four Patriots. I've given away some of those on my channel. Now, I don't get paid anything. I'm not getting endorsed or anything from Four Patriots Food. Um, I like their products. I've tried them out. Um, they're really good. And usually they got some really good sales. So yes, that is the higher end of your food preps when you start getting into your freeze dried foods. But if it's an evacuation type scenario, it's a lot easier to grab some of those and a lot lighter than it is if you're gonna to try to keep grabbing, say, three or four buckets, and they take up a lot less room in your vehicle if you are leaving. So remember that. 
That is the higher end, yes, but it's the more fastest way to evacuate and make sure that you do have some type of food to eat that is really good in nutrition, calorie count, and the whole nine yards, all your vitamins and everything, and it's all right there in a freeze-dried bag that probably, each one probably weighs less than maybe six, eight ounces, if that. So that's probably one of the ways that you may want to literally look at this and go, all right? So today's video was an eye-opener, all right? I wanted people to really start thinking about restructuring and reorganizing your long-term food storage or pantry at this point in time while you still have time and still can afford to go to the store and stock up on all the different things that you may need. Now, you also wanna make sure that you're taking stock of some of your emergency supplies and survival gear. Some of the basic stuffs, you know, does my flashlights work? Do I need more batteries? What type of batteries do I need? Do I have an emergency radio? Do I have batteries in that? Do I have batteries for it? You know, all this different type of stuff. I mean, there's a huge picture here, folks, and you really have to look at the whole picture when you tar are talking about survival preparedness, okay? It's just not about food. You have to make sure that you have some way to cook. You have to make sure that you have some way to sanitize and filter your water. You have to also make sure that you do have different objects and different things to help you through that situation. Maybe having some extra tarps, you may have roof damage from whatever type of a storm it could be. It could be a hail storm, it could be a tornado, it could be a hurricane, it could be anything. But if your roof is damaged, you got water leaking in, you know, it's the last thing you want. So you're gonna to have to have some way to cover that up. Just throwing that out there, just to give you an idea of what some of the stuff is that you may want to think about having just on the chance, because you just never know what is going to take place. Like I said in the beginning, folks, we don't have a crystal ball, because if we did, then we could be ready for what is coming next, because we would know. But we don't know. So that's why I started Survival Preparedness for Beginners, to help you be ready on a moment's notice. So, until next time, I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell, give me a thumbs up, and share this with your friends and family. Because Lord knows, your life could depend on it. So until next time, I will catch all of you on the zip set.